Question number three. These questions are the from the non-graphing calculator section of the free response section. So we've been given a graph of f prime. So this is a derivative function. And it says, let f be a differentiable function with f of 4 equals 3. Now, it's important to note that that is an initial condition. On the interval 0 to 7, the graph of f prime, the derivative of f consists of, consists of a semicircle and two line segments shown in the figure above. So some key points are that the area of the, under the curve is only the displacement. So if we want to find values of f of x, we need to start at a fixed point. In that case, our fixed point is going to be, we're going to start at x equals 4, y equals 3. The other thing is, as we integrate from right to left, we're going to get the opposite displacement. So our starting point, I'm just going to clearly mark out here. We're going to start at 4. Okay, so x equals 4. So if I want to calculate the value of f of 0, so f of 0 looks like this. We need to start at a y-coordinate of 3, and we're going to add on the displacement from x equals 4 to x equals, or we'll say t equals x. Okay, actually, I don't need to do that. I can just put in a value. We're going to go to 0. Okay, so we're going to find that area under the f prime graph. Okay, so I'm just going to highlight this. This area here is going to be the same as the semicircle area from 4 to 0. Now, it's important to note that this area is going to be the opposite displacement. So calculating this area, this area works out to be the radius is 2, so 2 squared times pi divided by 2. This area is going to be 2 pi. Okay, so, but since it's going, although it's underneath the x-axis, since we're going in the opposite direction, it's going to be negative of negative. So although the area is negative, we're going backwards, that means it's going to be positive displacement. So when we calculate f of 0, we're going to end up with 3 plus pi over 2. Sorry, plus 2 pi. So that's my f of 0. f of 5, we do in the same way. We're going to start at the starting point of 3. We're going to add the displacement from x's 4 to x is equal to 5 of f prime of t dt. So this area is going to be the area that I'm going to highlight here. So first of all, this is going to be 5. And so the area that I'm going to want is this area. Since you're going left to right, the area above the curve is going to be positive. That area I've calculated to be an area of one half. So then if I want to calculate this, the, the value of f of x when it, x equals 5, it's going to be 3 plus that area here. That area is going to be the 0.5 that I just calculated. 0 0.5 or one half. So at x is equal to 5, y is equal to 3.5, okay, or 7 over 2. Part B says, find the x-coordinates for all points of inflection on the graph of f for 0 to 7. So one of the key ideas is that the slope of f prime is going to be the second derivative, or f double prime. So we have the f prime graph, and if we look at the slope of the f prime graph, we're looking at f double prime, and that will tell us something about concavity. In fact, the change in direction of f prime from positive slope to negative slope will give us positive concavity to negative concavity, which is an inflection point. Or we can go from negative slope on f prime to positive slope on f prime. That's talking, we're 
then going to be talking about negative second derivative or negative concavity to positive second derivative, which is positive concavity. And again, that's going to give us an inflection point. So really, we're looking for change in direction. Okay, so this change in direction, if I take a look at this graph, the change in direction is going to happen right at the bottom here, where I have a horizontal tangent. Okay, so my second derivative is going to be equal to zero. So the derivative of the derivative is equal to zero. We also have a change in direction going at from positive slope to negative slope at x equals six. So that's another potential change in concavity. Now if I look at my the slope of the graph, okay, I'm just going to draw the slope in. It's negative going here, positive going here. So on the left side of two, I have negative concavity. On the right side of two, I have positive concavity. All the way up to six is going to be positive. And then when I go from six, I'm go now going down. So I'm going to change my slope which means I changed my second derivative to negative. That means negative concavity. So I have inflection points at x equals 2 and x equals 6. So inflection occurs at x equals 2 and x equals 6. So those are my two points of inflection, and I can justify that because I know that the change in direction or the change in the second derivative from positive to negative or negative to positive will give me an inflection point.